Hey guys, this is Drew Brashther with DBB Audio. I am here with the Behringer Wing, and we are going to be getting started into my brand new series of tutorials on the Behringer Wing. Now, this is going to be a brand new console from Behringer, and if you haven't checked out my overview of the console, make sure to check that out. Now, over this tutorial series, I'm going to be releasing a bunch of videos in my level 100, my level 200, and my level 300, going from the very basic to the more advanced techniques that I would use on the Behringer Wing. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel, make sure you do. Let's go ahead and dive into the first video, which is gonna be 101, and we're gonna be talking about inputs are sources. Now, the main difference between the Behringer X32 and the Behringer Wing is that the Behringer Wing has so many different input options available to us that are built into this console. The Behringer X32 is gonna be a 32 input and a six input on the aux, and basically there was about 38, maybe 40, if you counted the USB on channels that that console could do. No, those are going to be mono channels. The Behringer Wing is actually going to be 48 stereo channels, and you can configure them in a mono, a stereo, or a mid-side configuration. Now, that gives us a lot of input and output possibilities with this console. Now, with that comes the additional inputs as far as sources can go into this console. You know, there's three inputs on the AES-50, giving us quite a few inputs and outputs available to us on this console. Now, if we add up all of the different IO that's available on this board, we're getting close to 400. Now, that doesn't mean that this console can process 400 inputs at once. We're still limited to the 48 stereo, mono, or mid-side channels that are on this board. But let's go ahead and dive in and see what we're talking about with sources. Now, because Behringer has changed the terminology from an input to a source, we want to change our mindset that we're thinking of this. Because all of those inputs that we have on all those stage boxes, when you plug something in, you're wanting to think of that as an input source. Just add in the word source after you think of an input, and then things will make a lot more sense. Now, this console, we want to take a look at all of our sources in our routing page. So to do that, we go ahead and hit the routing button. And here we have our source groups. So we can see we have local in, and I can tap between any of these. And from this page, I can even change my gain settings or change it to a stereo setting if I had, say, a drum overhead group here. Now we can also go into our auxiliary inputs. And then our AES EBU, which is our digital. And then we have our AES 50A, which I have a DL32 connected to, which you can see that picture right there. And then I have my AES 50B, which is my Behringer X32. And I have my AES 50C, which I don't have anything connected, as we can see right here. We have our USB audio, which is the USB 2 built into the back of the board that I can connect into a computer with and use with any DAW that I want. My favorite to use is Reaper. It is very inexpensive and a very good quality program to use. Additionally, we have our expansion card, which on this console is the Wing Live, which is a dual SD card slot expansion card, which allows us to actually record or play back 64 mono sources. And then the very last thing that we have is our oscillator. And if you want to adjust the oscillator, you simply click on this and we can change things from sine wave to pink to white noise and do anything that we want here. Next, we have our Stage Connect, which is a brand new feature that Behringer has recently released, and there's going to be a lot more functionality coming out on this in the future. Additionally, we have our USB player, which is the USB slot on the top left of the console, and that can either record a two-channel or a four-channel recording directly to that USB stick, and you can also play that back. The very last thing I want to mention is this module that's right here. Now, this module is something that Behringer has yet to release, and there's going to be a lot more functionality on this. However, it is going to include a Dante card that you can install inside the console, and using the Ethernet connections on the back of the console will get you Dante input into this console. Now, we can see that there are 64 channels of I.O. on this card. As you can see, there's a lot of different source options that we have available to us, and I'm sure that you're thinking, oh my gosh, my routing sheet is going to be ridiculously long, and you're probably right. 
The next video I'm gonna show you is going to be on how to name those sources to keep our board organized. So stay tuned.